Hello, I'm Michele from mestautomation.com. In this video we will see how to connect uh, to a camera, both USB or IP camera, with C Sharp and we will use uh, a framework for Forge that is really simple to get started with and it also permits to do a basic image processing. This time uh, you can go on Mest Automation and uh, check for the article Get Started with Real-Time Image. There are the link in the description and uh, we start uh, by looking the sample application that is on github you can go here and uh, download it now i already downloaded the sample application here it is okay let's build the application perfect so in this um, i made five samples on this um, application one for windows forms and four for wpf so we just start on windows forms application so this is just how to connect to the camera and uh, you see that there is a list of uh, video sources we can ju just click start and the camera connects and uh, displays the images the video so you can also see on uh, task manager so I have the Italian uh, operating system now, but in the task manager you can see the memory consumption that gets reset. So when working with images you have to be careful of not uh, making memory leak. So this is one uh, thing to keep in mind when doing this, thing, this kind of application that the memory should stay low. So well, this is just a simple uh, example, so uh, it works uh, like this. You basically have a video source object and the video device list collection then uh, when you push the start button as you see you create a video source object once you created the video source you have a, an event new frame that you have to subscribe with and then uh, you can give start to the video source the subscription just receive uh, an event asks re receive a bitmap so every time the camera makes a bitmap uh, the Aforge uh, generates this event so you take the bitmap, make a clone of the bitmap, and you can assign this to picture box one. So let's switch to WPF. That it's uh, a bit more complicated. The first example is uh, uh, shows you uh, how to do the same things with WPF. You basically create a window, again the combo box, and the start and stop button to show the images. Uh, with WPF you have to convert the images from bitmap to bitmap source or bitmap image so there is this helper that uh, given a bitmap he returns a bitmap image and uh, when and uh, we have a image control that uh, will host our images when we push start we create a video source and uh, on your frame event we just create a bitmap image instead of a bitmap so we convert the bitmap that we receive from events to bitmap image and then we freeze it and then we uh, assign to the video, video player dot source video player is just an image as you can see and they name it video player so this is all you need to know to get access to a camera from WPF we can access also to IP cameras uh, I don't have an IP camera right now, so but I can show you how it works. So you have a connection string, so here it takes probably a, an IP address and uh, uh, a new URL of the image. For example, this is for an Axis camera. Then you select the protocol JPEG or MJPEG, and you can push start to stop. And uh, again, the code is really simple, as you can see so you, you have the video source now it's not is a JPEG stream or a MJPEG stream depends on the protocol of the IP camera and again video source dot new frame so so you have to subscribe to the event and on the event again you are going to display um, the same uh, images as before okay now let's see a bit of filtering of images so okay this is a uh, how to apply filters 
in real time. So here you have uh, uh, the camera connected. This is the original image. We can apply a filter, a grayscale filter. So this will turn the image in grayscale. And we can apply a threshold filter and regulate the threshold like this. This is a binary image. So these kind of uh, filters are applied in this way. You go on the event handle of new frame. This is uh, how to apply the grayscale uh, filter. And uh, there is a method apply. Okay, apply creates a new bitmap from my existing bitmap, and the new bitmap has the filter. Again, we have to convert the bitmap to a bitmap image. If I click on threshold, I have to apply two filters. So the first, I apply the grayscale, and then uh, I apply a, a threshold filter uh, to the grayscale bitmap, and I obtain a threshold bitmap. And these filters are needed to do more complicated, more uh, interesting uh, application. For example, this one. In this application, I track the position of uh, some objects, in this case, some post-it. So, here we start the camera. Okay, I have a post-it, I choose the color, and uh, the application draws the border. Uh, I can take another post-it, a green one, pick the color, and the application draws the border. Uh, so how does this work? So we make a color filtering in the beginning on a RGB color filtering. We can regulate the radius of the color filtering. The more I increase, the more the color appears, and the more I decrease, the more I filter. So okay, this seems quite enough. Then once we have a, a good filtering of the image, we apply a grayscale filter and then we make a threshold filter and uh, the application will recognize the regions, the blobs uh, and uh, will detect the border of these regions, the white regions in, uh, uh, in this case, so we design the borders around our object um, depending on the grayscale so, for a light object, I, I need a threshold, I need an, an higher threshold, but if the grayscale is uh, dark, I, I need to go with a, slow tre a lower threshold. So, if with, uh, so there are two uh, parameters that I have to, to adapt now. One is the color filtering, and it's this, and the second one, is the threshold to adapt to the grayscale. Uh, this depends on the light and depends on a lot of factors. Okay, this is how this application works. So we you can go to analyze the process and the filtering that I do. The filters, uh, you can find the filters in this method, find corners. It takes a bitmap, then it apply a Euclidean color filtering. So this is a filter on RGB and uh, we pass the red, green, and blue values. Then we pass a radius that makes a sphere around uh, every uh, a, a sphere of colors to filter. Then we use a plain place in this case, so we destroy the clone image and we recreate a new image already filtered. Then we pass to a grayscale uh, we use a grayscale filtering. In this case, we use apply and we create a new image. Um, when we go to grayscale, we need to use apply to create a new bitmap with a new format that is 16 BVP. And before, we had a 32 BVP that is from WPF. Once we have uh, uh, our grayscale bitmap, we apply a threshold if you want to invert the threshold we can invert the threshold and then we use blobs okay uh, blobs are the re the white regions in the thresholded bitmap now to um, to use uh, this processing we use a blob counter and uh, 
we do a blob counter dot process image this will process the blobs and we will find the blob we can use some filtering of these blobs uh, we do we use a uh, filter blobs equal true then we can use a uh, minimum width mini uh, minimum height and uh, I also order by size the object once we have the blobs I can iterate for all the blobs and check the edge of all the blobs and then return the uh, the edge of the blob that I can so usually if the filter is good enough you have one blob for this application and so that's this is how it works um, okay you can find all the links in the description you can also find uh, the article and the source code is on github so if you like the video subscribe uh, like the video and uh, uh, see you next time